you'll have to help me down and I'll help you up. I have to get a few more handwriting. <laughs> Lift chair or something. There you go. Home church for change. It's the first time we've met here. It's been a lot of, a lot of hindrances. You know, that's I knew that. Uh, I guess it's the Holy Spirit was warning me that I was going to meet a lot of opposition. Right. And what's going? And it has not been any different. And uh, but if you don't get opposition, you evidently going to see where the devil is. Right. If you're going off, it's going to meet you. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, but anyway, there's sufficient grace to take care of uh, that. But you can uh, you can see if if you're business for the Lord, you can see when it says that God is the, uh, I mean Satan is the God of this world. Yeah. And uh, he yeah. controls it. Well, he took he took over where Adam sent the world. Right. And right. He's still in uh, business. And, his, his business is to be in opposition to uh, God's people. He's the enemy of God, mm -hmm. the enemy of God's people. But anyway, uh, I thank the Lord to be able to come back tonight and be asked to preach again here. And Sunday, I'm looking forward to that day. We'll be at, <coughs> over close to Bowling Green on the Tennessee side with a young man that uh, I baptized over 40 years ago. He was only about 50, man. He was just a lad of the boy. And it sounds to me like, you know, I haven't been around him a whole lot because uh, uh, I passed him for several years. He grew up there and graduated from our Christian school. And uh, then uh, he went to Tennessee to go to work, and God was dealing with him about preaching, so he finally did find a surrender himself for that. And he started a uh, church up in Portland, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Lord's blessed him. I was really, I was really praying. I mean, he was on my mind that, that I'd like to go there. But I still remember calling anybody. He like, don't, I just don't do it. I figured, right. I figured the Holy Ghost would get me where he wants me if I listen to him and uh, follow him. And so one of the letters uh, we sent out, this not too awful long ago, uh, we, I may mention that uh, you know, anyone is interested in me coming, I'd be glad to. And he sent back, but he is that he'd like me to come. And, uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Because uh, that's, that's where my ministry really lays, is uh, trying to help uh, churches and young preachers yeah. to uh, get, get started, you know, and go good. And I think uh, every time a door opens like that, I thank the Lord for it. All right, if you have your Bibles, open to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter, it's not but uh, ten verses and it won't take long to read it. Paul and Salvanus and Timotheus and the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for you, for you all making mention of you in our prayers. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith, your labor of love, and your patience of hope in the Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God our Father. Knowing, knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God, for our gospel came not, <coughs> came not unto you in word only, but also in power, and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Ghost, so that ye were in samples to all that believed in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, 
but also in every place your faith to, uh, to Godward is spread abroad so that we need not to speak anything. For they themselves showed of us what manner of entering in we had unto you and know how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and the true God. Amen. And to wait for his son from heaven uh, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. May God add his blessings to the reading of the word of God. And I want to just touch on some things in this. We're nothing like doing a, what you'd call a full exposition. And I'm not sure I'm capable of good preaching that way anyway. But uh, you notice here, Paul says, knowing, brethren, the love, your election of God. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people said you can't know who the elect are. Well, you can't, you, you can't before they're regenerated, but after they're regenerated, you can. Why? Because they're new creatures. There's going to be some, they're going to be some fruit. If there's no fruit, there's no root. You can just put that down. Amen. And people that never seem to grow in grace and never get a hold of anything, they got a problem. Some of there's a disconnect somewhere Amen. between that. But now, he said, of course, in verse 3, he said, uh, remembering, uh, remember without ceasing your work of faith and your labor of love and your patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. The sight of God. In other words, there is some remarks we could uh, preach on. Uh, he knew that uh, because of their, uh, because of the work of faith. Amen. You know, James talks a lot about faith and it working. He said, if it doesn't work, it's dead. Right. Amen. It's no use. People, he said, you can say I have faith, but I show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. Amen. And so, yes, we can know when people have been regenerated. We can't know because they're new creatures in Christ Jesus. There's no reason we can't know. But you notice something. There's about three things I'll touch on here. But you know, he said, For our gospel came not to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance. Amen. In other words, they, they had a genuine Christian experience. And I, I, know, I know we don't all have the exact same reaction. Uh, when the Lord deals with us. But I do believe that regeneration is something when it takes place we'll know about it. Amen. It's not something we get by faith. Now I've had some, since I've come to see the Doctrine of Grace several years ago, I've had some pretty good discussions with people on that. Uh, they get upset. Oh no, I said, you can't, you can't have regeneration without faith. I said, how in the world can a dead man have faith? That's it, Amen. In other words, you're laying in sins and trespasses, dead, spiritually dead, until the Holy Spirit does a miraculous work on you. And He don't need your permission to do it either. Amen. He does it. But see, so many say to me, now the Lord just too much of a gentleman to invade your heart. I said, if He don't invade your heart, it will never be invaded. That's, that's the silly Armenian Amen. stuff that goes on. It, it, you know, it really gets me. And talk about... I was reading, a, started out reading a book, and the guy's got some pretty good stuff in there, but he, he uh, made a statement uh, that the reason why the Lord hadn't come back, he's waiting so he could save more people. <laughs> now, there may be something to that. I don't really think so. Because uh, he knows exactly how many he's saved have. because he determined that for the world. He might have. And it hadn't lowered in it, hadn't raised in it, it's still the same number. It's now, when he gets when that last one, that number is saved, then he'll come. Amen. But that's not his business waiting. What they're saying, he's waiting on man. Yeah. No, he don't wait, wait on man. You're right. I tell you what, when, when uh, the Apostle Paul was saved, the Lord knocked him off of that camel or whatever he was writing. I mean, he had no more argument. He said, Lord, what do you have me to do? Amen. I know you're the Lord. Now, he didn't ask the Lord to do that. He didn't pray no sinner's prayer. No you're right, sinner. amen. And so what I'm saying, salvation's of God. <laughs> Right. It's not part of God and part man. Right. That's what they're uh, talking about, uh, I think, in, in Galatians. You know, you're mi trying to mix the uh, works of the law with grace, and you can't do it. They don't mix. Amen. You're grace right. Grace stands alone. You're right. Amen. And because I know my own self, if it hadn't been for God taking the initiative and dealing with me, I would have never been saved. That's it. Amen. Had too much pride. Mm. Had several things that was hindering me. But 
Praise be to God. He's when he got after me, he just stayed with me. Amen. I mean, he got on my trail, he stayed with me. And finally called me one Friday morning. Amen. But uh, what I'm talking about, I didn't, to be honest with you, I didn't have a fight to do it. Right. God started the work, He continued the work, and He'll culminate the work. Now, I don't mean by that that, you know, something in, in, in uh, regeneration must take place. Then the next thing will take place will be conversion. Mm -hmm. What is conversion? Conversion is repentance and faith. Right. But see, regeneration gives you life. Brings you to spiritual life. And when it does that, then you repent toward God. Right. And put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> See, the difference in us and some, you, I guess they call it hard. I believe in the highest use of means. Mm -hmm. Amen. God uses means. You're right. Now, they don't, primitive Baptists don't believe that. They don't believe that. They'd hear me say something else a while ago, they'd think I did, but I do. But you can't do anything until God has quickened you. Amen. Made you alive, spiritually alive. Yeah. And then you respond. That's where the gospel comes in. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ, we, we turn to Him. Yeah. And believe on Him. And turn from our uh, wicked way of life. But we do none of that until God's made us alive. That's it. So how did Paul know that? Number one, he knew it because he could see the fruits of regeneration. If there's no fruits in your life, you better question it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, sir, uh, I was preaching a meeting several years ago in Orangeburg. And uh, the pastor was a big fan of Jack Hiles and all that crap. And how the Lord ever got me, why he got me, I never did really know. And I think the Lord took care of that one. But I, uh, he heard me on the radio and he knew exactly what I believed. And he called me and he said, one night, I was shocked. I was sitting there at home, you know, and phone run and I answered it and it's just fell you know. And he said, I'm gonna schedule you for a meeting. And he said, I wanna go just as long as we need to to have a Bible. I said, you're sounding pretty good now. Mm -hmm. See, we can't schedule the Bible. Right. We schedule meetings, not the Bible. And God don't work on our term. But anyway, uh, first night or two, uh, he was all three. And people started coming to the altar. I don't think they're getting anything because it had nothing stirred up yet. Mm -hmm. Well, the next thing you know, God got in. Amen. And then the preacher got to doubt. He really did. He'd run down the altar every night and he'd say, I know I'm saved, so and so led me to the Lord. That's pretty, pretty shallow ground to be on. <laughs> and you know what? Finally, he just he wanted to carry on. We got over into uh, Tuesday night for the next week and he just jumped up and canceled that thing. Mm -hmm. And people was coming. I mean, God was working. And he just got up. So I believe we just need to close this meeting. Mm -hmm. He said to me, he said, if you'll follow me up to the rest of the person, I'll give you the rest of your offer. Mm -hmm. But there was a missionary there along that a long time, missionary Lonnie Smith down in Mexico. Mm -hmm. So we went out and got something to eat. What I'm saying, his whole life was built on the person, the supposedly famous person that led him to go. Mm. That's a poor, poor footage. You're right, man. <clears throat> and I, I believe salvation experience, I believe we all have the same kind. I don't know, but I guarantee you one thing, I believe there's an internal, internal work that goes on by the Holy Spirit. So these folks at Thessalonica had a, they had a real gospel experience. And uh, so that's what, that's what you can stand on. Then I want you to notice there's something else. Verse 6, and they became followers of us. Amen. And of the Lord. You know, Paul said, follow me as I follow the Lord. And said, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. They went through a lot of affliction to believe. But they stayed with it. But you notice they followed. Amen. You find somebody out here, somebody's going through the screen door, and they never show up at church. Uh, anything, I don't have much confidence in that. Right. I remember when we first started church in Madisonville, we had, uh, there was a lady come one Sunday morning, and 
So Brother Brock would come to hold a meeting for me. So we went out there to their house to visit. Well, she come to the door and she didn't have enough clothes to wash shotgun. <laughs> and she started telling us there to go all about, uh, they had been members of First Baptist and Hammond, Jack Hiles' church, and how they won souls, and how they done all this. But anyway, uh, you know, that's, that's all she had to tell. Mm -hmm. But yet, they had her believing that she was saved, she may have been, but I have my serious doubts about it. I mean to tell you, she was skimpy, you know, with her clothes. Like somebody asked uh, old B.R. Lincoln, said, do you ever preach on uh, mini skirts? He said, there ain't enough material for a message. <laughs> 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 I'll leave those subjects to Brother Larry. He takes care. He, he bowls that prayer. He's pretty good. But it's not. You know what here, though? It says that they became followers. I believe when we when we come to know Christ, we want to follow him. I just, you know, we you may get sidetracked now and then, but we want to follow him. And then he went on down here and he said, uh, verse 9, for they so showed themselves, they showed us of what manner of entering in we had unto them. That is, whether they're going to Thessalonica was profitable, or it would. Now notice here, have you turned to God from idols? Amen. There's repentance. Repentance is turning. And you cannot repent until you have life. See, there's action now, and, and, and that, God grants the repentance. It's not something you do on your own, but he grants it to you. Then you can turn to God with all your heart, with no questions. Amen. And that's what Paul was going on. He, he, had seen, he had seen the experience they had, that the gospel had real effect on them, was the power of God. And uh, then he saw that they fallen. In other words, they left their idols and started following him. He said down here that... Uh, what matter had in unto you, how you turn to God. See, I believe repentance is turning. Mm -hmm. Amen. We turn from idols and turn from the world. And just because we live in America don't mean you got that. America's about as idolatrous anymore as any nation on the top of the right. world. You're right. You're right. Well, they honor everything but God. Amen. Now, I mean, it's, it, it, all the, the heathens that's coming over here is getting positions. Mm hmm. Right. Yeah. So, good. He said here, so the matter of entering we, had, entering, we had unto you, how you turn to God from idols. And then he said this, to serve the living and true God. That's faith. Mm -hmm. So what you got, you got regeneration, you got uh, uh, repentance, and you got faith. Somebody said, well, you, you preach like you don't believe in repentance. Yes, sir, I believe in it. But I don't believe in repentance. It's a ball and squalling about a cup full of tears or something every time and call that thing. Repentance is a real turning that takes place. Amen. And it never, you, you'll be a good repenter the rest of your life if God has granted you repentance. You're right. Amen. I don't know about you. I, I repent all the time for what I am. Mm -hmm. Born sinner. Came forth from my mother's womb, speaking lies. Mm -hmm. You can take you can take a small baby, and I know it, a lot of people don't believe it. But what do they wonder why they learn to cry when they don't have no need? It's natural. That's right. Comes out of that natural. I'm not I'm not cutting down on it, but that's the truth. He said, "I came forth from my mother's womb, speaking lies." Amen. David said, Behold, my mother conceived me in sin. I was born a sinner. And until God regenerated me, that's all I was. But now I'm a sinner saved with grace. Amen. Right? Spiritually alive. Hallelujah. I like that song. What a day that will be. Amen. Yeah. We'll become real shouters in those days. Amen. Amen. Around the throne of God, find that praising Him for who He was and the grace that He showed to us. Boy, I tell you what, it's troublesome when you know people that you care about and everything, and they don't have no interest in their soul. That's right. Oh, man. 
people, if I, if I was lost, I'd get my Bible and I'd read it every day until God spoke to me. I'd read it and pray, God, will you speak to my poor dead heart? I said, oh, you, a sinner can't pray. Yeah. They can't get into the throne room, but I'll tell you what, out of their heart, when God gets to dealing with them, they do some crying. Amen. Amen. I'd heard so many different things before I was saved. That, you know, this and that, and you do this, and you say that, and if there's nothing else, you'll be all right. Well, I never could get no peace out of that. Never could. But one day, I came to the place I was so desperate that I didn't care what people thought or anything. I said to the Lord, I was worn up. I just want peace. Hmm. I don't care. I had a lot of jobs in the church and all that stuff. And you know what? He struck peace in my soul. Amen. Peace like a river attended my way. Amen. Now, I'm not so pretending that you've got to have an experience just like I have. But I'll never forget it. Sitting among maybe 30 men, whole district full of insurance sales men, was having a, uh, uh, was introducing a new rate book. That's a metropolitan life insurance company. And among them, the Lord saved me. Well, uh, I didn't know enough then. But so now I've got them told what happened. It scared them to death. <laughs> I'd get up and go to the washroom, kind of get myself straightened up. And I'd come back, and about the time I'd sit down, I'd think again, I'm saved. <laughs> and boy, I'll tell you what, it'd, it'd break that fountain loose again. Hey, man. I mean, they thought I was in a nervous break. I wouldn't. I'm just telling you, there's joy and real salvation. I'll never forget, I was preaching up in Indiana at a meeting, and, and uh, <clears throat> the brother pastor the church up there along Jack's story. Jack had called me and we'll go back to him up there to preach. He is moderating the meeting, and there's several preachers there, Tom Hayes and some others. And uh, so anyway, so a young boy, I'll never forget him, he was full of enthusiasm, which is all right. Uh, it's kind of like the young fellas come by and, uh, and was after the old man trying to get him saved. And somebody asked him, do you think they'll go to heaven? He said, they don't know if shoot it, they will. <laughs> but this boy was about like that. And he said, I'll tell you, I remember the day that uh, my name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Mm -hmm. Of course, but the story read like we did. And he got up in his real grace to see him when he hurt the young man. And he said, you know, I don't remember the day my name was written there, but I sure remember the day I found out about it. Amen. <laughs> I thought that was the good answer he could give. He didn't, didn't tear the young man up, you know, anything. But he said, I sure remember the day I found out about it. Well, that's who I am. I don't remember my name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It wasn't written that day when God regenerated me. Right. My name was put in the Book of Life when it was way back there. Yep. Amen. Amen. So he said here he said they they themselves showed us. They didn't have to wonder about what kind they had, what kind of entering, what kind of ministry they had. Showed us what manner of in and in we entered in we had unto you, how that ye turned to God from idols. Amen. And you turned to God to serve the living. Serve the living God. And to wait for his son from heaven. Brother Larry was talking about when he's making announcements and things. If we don't have some desire for that coming glorious day, with something something wrong. See, they were waiting for his son from heaven, whom uh, he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Thank God that day of wrath is coming, but we won't be in it. Amen. We'll be gone. He sure as the angels went down and removed Lot out of Sodom before they dropped the fire. 
He's going to move us. We'll go, wow, that's a day of wrath. Amen. Now the all, all millennials don't believe that, but I do. In other words, we're not subject to the wrath. Of Amen. You're right. And I thank the Lord for that. Well, I just give you two, three thoughts on this Wednesday night. I'm not going to hold you a long time, but that's surprising. But I'm not known as being a long winded preacher. I do enjoy being here tonight and the opportunity to speak to you and give you a little testimony Man. of what God has done. And I know you'd have a testimony if you're saved to tell how God saved you. But it all comes out the same thing. It comes out of regeneration that produces repentance and faith, which is the fruit of regeneration. So God help us to do that, that we might serve Him and praise Him and walk with Him. Amen. Amen.